It seems as though every new car that comes along these days has to have more of everything. More power, naturally. More fancy styling, of course. And it goes without saying, more weight. And then we come on to this, and as we shall discover in the next few minutes, this one is a little bit different. Now, one of the big things about the new Swiss Sport is the weight, or, to be more accurate, the lack of weight, because this car weighs under a thousand kilograms, 975 to be precise, and Suzuki says that you can really feel that with this car. It's 30 kilograms lighter than the old Swift Sport, and frankly, it's pretty remarkable these days for a brand new car to be lighter than the car it replaces. Not only has Suzuki put the new Swift Sport on a weight loss program, but it has added more muscle. Now, under the bonnet is one of Suzuki's new 1.4 litre turbocharged booster jet engines. What a great name, booster jet. It sounds like a 1950s American fridge, doesn't it? But it's Suzuki speak for turbocharged. So we've got 138 brake horsepower and 230 newton meters of torque. That's around, well, it's around 70 newton meters more torque than you've got in the old one. And Suzuki says you can really feel it in in gear acceleration. We'll come on to that a little bit later. Suzuki says there's also a brand new sports exhaust, so there should be a nice tuneful exhaust note to this new 1.4 litre turbo as well. To match the sporty performance, there's a neat little body kit, 17 inch wheels, and you can get the sport in this rather sudden champion yellow paint colour. You sit in a more supportive bucket seat, there are LED headlights and a wealth of extra safety kit thrown in. And the price? £17,995. However, that's where the good news stops, because unfortunately, the Swift Sport isn't quite as fun as it should be. Now, it sits in a very awkward part of the market. Now, at just under £18,000, this is doing business with the likes of the Ford Fiesta ST line and the soon-to-be-released Ford Fiesta ST and also the Volkswagen Polo GTI. However, this car's got the power output of a Bath 500 or a Volkswagen Up GTI. So £18,000 for something with just under 140 brake horsepower seems an awful lot of money. The second bad thing about the Swift Sport is that it doesn't really feel that sporty. Now, the two previous Swift Sports felt incredibly fun to drive, whereas this one feels a lot more grown up. It feels a lot more mature. Now, if you're after that kind of thing, if you want a Suzuki Swift with a little bit more extra power, you'll really like this car. However, if you like your hot hatches to be fast, pointy and really sporty, this one will leave you feeling a little bit cold. Why? Well, it's partly to do with that engine. There is a lot of in-gear acceleration, but it doesn't make a particularly nice noise. The gearbox, you can change gear very quickly, but there isn't a very nice change action at all. And the whole chassis of this car, it doesn't really encourage you to drive particularly fast. You turn this thing into a corner and there isn't the adjustability that you get in something like a Fiesta ST line. It feels very prone to understeer and very unadjustable. It's fine, it does, doesn't really reward you. It doesn't entice you to drive this thing like your trousers are on fire. With two smash hits under its belt, Suzuki should have made a cracker, but it seems this third album is a disappointment. The Swift Sport has nicely matured, but with that, it's now not as involving to drive as before and comes with a steep price tag. And with the new Fiesta ST costing only a thousand pounds more, it seems as though Suzuki has shot itself in the foot. Click the video window on the left for a first drive of the new Volkswagen Polo GTI and on the right for a track battle between the Hyundai i30N and Peugeot's 308 GTI. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel by pressing the Auto Express logo. Thanks for watching.